Okay, and the camera looks so much clearer, man. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's the lights. I'm telling you, any camera can be made better with lights. Okay, we are live. Uh, welcome to this stream. I'm Shanak. That's I'm Mani. <laughs> and uh, today, what we're going to try to do is try and make a very basic food blog with Hugo and show people along the way how it works and how it's done. Does that sound good? Absolutely. Okay. So just to give you a good, give everyone a tour of the landscape, not just you, because Mani and I have been chatting for some time before this. Uh, <laughs> we have three scenes set up. One is where you'll be able to see the code that we write, and we'll try to keep it fairly minimal. One, we can see the browser, so we see what our result looks like, and some goals and notes. So I think like the one of the big things which I think we should let everyone know is. The whole idea behind this is I want to set up the site and money is an expert at Hugo. So you're going to guide me as I do things. But you can, of course, type in my ID uh, because That's of the live share and everything. So, OK, so let's get started. This came to us when a friend asked us to help her set up her food blog, which is exciting because we needed a topic to set up for this video. Uh, and the the basic idea of that blog is that it's around food but it's also around the culture and the nostalgia of food and this person is from a mixed cultural heritage so talking about uh like just that aspect of it so i think that's a really good blog because this is a little more complicated than the very basic blog that you can set up where you have blog post blog post blog post this has some kind of trees and I feel this might be good to explore some Hugo features with. So I guess that's the backstory. Uh, it's a blog for Vriti. We want to set up something that explores some mixed cultural heritage um, and revolves around food. So with that sort of in mind, we can go on. And the goals for today are simple. Have it set up so we can basically look at it locally. Push it to Netflix. And in brackets, like yeah. set up really quickly. Set up. Quick, <laughs> which is, I think, the interesting part. I, at some point, we should compare with WordPress, but I also don't want to bash WordPress too much. It's good for what it is. Um, <laughs> of course, hosted on Netlify, and again, cheaply in brackets, <laughs> and have it work with Forestry so easily. I think that's the core themes Beautiful. of this. Uh, so yeah, I think first we can start out by selecting a theme for the blog, and of course, Money has wonderfully done some legwork and minimized our Hugo themes. So essentially you can go down a, how do I say this? Like a, a rabbit hole for which Hugo themes are available, but we're not going to go down that rabbit hole, otherwise we'll be here forever. So uh, maybe you can talk us through why you'd like these two themes and just in general, which one do you think we should go? Or we can discuss that. Yeah, so the two themes that I sent to you are pretty, or magazine like mm -hmm. which for a top which for a theme like this would really really fit in yeah and for me the pri the, the primary thing i was also looking at was i wanted them to be built on bootstrap mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. like i wouldn't want to get into a discussion of bootstrap being bloaty or not at this point yeah. Yeah. but this was getting something set up really quickly and to show the person who wants to uh showcase this mm -hmm. Like it'll be re like it's really really quick for us to choose one of uh, choose one of those themes that Hugo already has. Sure. And uh, these two themes I feel really work for the use case. Makes sense. Um. So between this one, I like this one because it's very clean. Like this reminds me yeah. of New York Times. Whereas this one, uh, I like the individual blog elements. I also like what it does here. Like I think if we go back one step, it like auto generate I, I mean it auto selects the first image as the hero image and so if you're navigating yeah. it's pretty neat so i think the, i mean uh, this is the page i was talking about so this is like really attractive when somebody lands on a blog whereas this one i feel like i personally like how clean it is but i, I think there's something to be said about style and content here like if you have a lot of yeah. content this looks really nice but yeah. if you just imagine this to be sparse it's going to be not great uh, we also sure. know that a part of this is to be a portfolio for Vriti. So this would really help her, like the about me side page. I can't really find a way to jerry rig that here. So maybe. And also, yeah. Uh, I think the second theme, it works a lot for travel yeah. vloggers. Yeah. You could totally use that to maybe say document your trip in Europe, yeah. Yeah. for example. Yeah. 
or artists uh, like honestly yeah, if art- i had a painting thing i would probably go with this but uh, yeah i think for those reasons i think i like this leva one to start with yeah. uh, let's start with that so what's the first step do we go try to pull these theme files and how do we do that so uh, you basically just have to go to the theme page so mm-hmm. if you look at your uh, url mm-hmm. i mean the easiest thing is to do is just go back to the theme list and click on the page okay but <laughs> ah, no, this goes back to the older blog i am just going to click on this one because i assume no that's not where it goes uh, okay let's go to themes.hugo and search for leva yeah i'll also check that out here ah uh, there we go okay Yep, Leva Hugo. So now just click on the download button there. Wait, I don't oh, yeah, think I found it. It took so me to the live. Left. Leva. Yeah, so. No, no, uh, so you can actually just do a control F on this page. Oh, okay. Control F. Leva. There we go. Leva Hugo. There you go. Um, and we have a uh, download thing. Yep. So that takes us to the GitHub page, which is, I think, the first interesting thing uh, to discuss that gi- pretty much almost all of the themes i've seen for hugo are to be git cloned or at least are designed to do that uh, am i yeah yeah uh, whereas on wordpress you would download it upload it via ftp etc here uh, so we are here we are here in my system which is just code food blogs and what i have here is just some shared notes so you and i can talk which we have on screen yeah. and the hugo executable uh, we will discuss that after a little later why i'm using it this way and why not install it but uh so for the first step i guess would be to just clone the theme right git clone absolutely okay so let's go ahead let's um let's clone this is cloning into a directory called leva hugo that's great um i might actually uh, make another directory here called blog site and i'll tell you why because uh, i want to move everything into a blog site actually no we probably don't need this directory correct me if you don't I'm wrong. need that you yeah. don't you it's don't going to go that. create this directory when i run the hugo command right yeah so when you do hugo create mm-hmm. it would definitely uh, it it'll ask you for a project name so then you don't okay. have to yourself okay that's good so let's do that actually as a first step so we go hugo and so there's two ways one you can install hugo to your system using chocolatey uh the other super hacky thing i have done is obviously just go to the hugo website and um, get the windows build that you saw here so i went here i said quick start and I, they said install hugo and they said there's also hugo releases that's where i went to and as you can see they have these pre compiled releases one of them is for windows i am sure do you see the windows one Now uh, maybe they don't have it for the latest one maybe they have it a step before so let's go this is the one i grabbed all these oh there we go so i just all i did was downloaded the zip and unzip the exe into this folder so this means i don't actually have to install hugo to use it i can just type hugo.exe and continue using it so that's one aspect if people are not aware you don't have admin permissions or in my case i just have another instance of chocolatey installed that causes problems <laughs> um so anyway that's i think one of the good things about windows is you can just grab a executable and run it and it's great uh so let's do that so the first step would be to say hugo new site as you have and what do you name it yeah new site and let's just give it its actual name which is like pepper project or rather let's give it a internal name of pepper project which is a snappy name for a food blog there we go and it showed us some documentation it asks us to download the theme inside that folder so should we go do that absolutely so now just yeah. cd into the theme folder yeah, yeah. Uh, change of youtube vs code by the way oh i'm sorry we are just constantly watching my notes there we go so so for the step before what i did was i went and ran this uh, command which is hugo new site pepper project it created this directory with a bunch of content already so maybe money you can walk us through what archetypes are and like why is the folder structure this way i guess 
Absolutely. So archetypes are some things which I will come to at the mm-hmm. end because mm-hmm. it'll be easier to understand them when you understand sure. what content sure. what content is. So the content folder is mm-hmm. basically the dump of all the markdown files and all the um the directories that you want on your website. Mm-hmm. Images. So for example, if it can have images, okay. but you would much rather use images in the resources folder okay. or the static folder. Okay, so we basically have markdown and potentially Absolutely. you have uh, folders based on categories or types of content. The folders mainly based on the parent uh, the parent page. So for example, if your parent page is about, mm-hmm. if your parent page is posts, mm-hmm. blog, services. Okay, so uh, that, that makes so sense. Like that. And you said you, we have another folder called resources. Yeah, you have resources, so you'll not see that right now because mm-hmm. that's actually uh, an ignored folder in a way. Yeah. Like it's something that's created yeah. uh, when you're passing, when Hugo actually has to create those uh, I see. CSS, JS, or image files. Yeah. So then data, on the other hand, is a very interesting folder. If mm-hmm. you have any content which you do not want to store as markdown, mm-hmm. which may be JSON, YAML, or even TOML format, you can mm-hmm. just dump them into the data folder and have Hugo loop through those. Yeah. Okay. And I'm assuming... Layouts is... Yeah. Yeah. So uh, so layouts is very simply the layout of every single route on your website. Mm-hmm. Static is, of course, the folder where all your, uh, all your images and... It can be CSS, but it's not best practice to put okay. CSS in your static folder. Okay. So ideally, I would say images should can go in a static folder, mm-hmm. or um, maybe if it's your domain val- like verification HTML, yeah. uh, like secrets, etc. Exactly, exactly. Okay. That sounds good. Uh, so what we did is we did git clone Leva there, but I'm gonna go ahead yeah. and delete it because we probably should git clone it inside the yeah. themes directory. Absolutely. Uh, Delete permanently. There we go. Uh, so that went there. And but before that, the, the last mm-hmm. thing we have we can talk about is also config.toml. Okay. So That's like how we, yeah, like how you mm-hmm. have. Um, uh, what does uh, npm make? Like what is the file that npm makes? Package.json. Package.json. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So package.json for an npm script can be compared to a config.toml or config.yaml for okay, Hugo. Okay, that makes sense. So it's uh, so it houses something... every single information that you need yeah. to that the site needs to uh, to mm-hmm. execute the code. Mm-hmm. Okay. One interesting thing I think not that many people talk about. Uh, I at least for me I found it interesting. Um, like. Can you not use config.toml to control internationalization? So if you have like a site in different languages, you could go set up. You can. Yeah. So that's also, I think that's cool. And um, you can. It's something people overlook initially. Yeah. And later when you have like Spanish visitors to your site, you're like, oh, how do I go do that? I'm like, okay, yeah, you have to plan that ahead. So that's another cool thing about Hugo. So Hugo does um, have a multilingual mode. Yeah, I haven't experimented with it as much, but mm-hmm. I do know that uh, in the doc site they have exhaustively mm-hmm. mentioned how to get through it. Mm-hmm. Okay, that makes sense. Um, I think uh, the stream might be stuttering a little bit, so I don't know exactly why. Uh, That's good. Cool. Anyway, we'll figure it out as we go. Not sure what. Maybe my internet connection um, is recovering. So, okay, so let's go actually pull. So I'm inside the site and Hugo created the paper project. So I'm going to go in that. Yeah. And um, now let's try to see if we can uh, git clone the theme into this. So I'm going to go here. Yeah, so git, so git clone the theme into the themes folder. Clone. Oh, into the themes folder. So let me just yeah. tell Git to do that. Yeah. It's also weird for me to use Windows command line because I use Bash most of the time. <laughs> Next time we'll use Bash. <laughs> um, so we are here and it's given us uh, it's given us a bunch of files, which I see they mirror the files that we see outside. So it's given us some 
I guess it's just so. Gonna... I think this is where it may have. Uh, mm-hmm. It it may have messed up a little bit. Mm-hmm. So you might want to do one thing. So yeah. the like let's since the team's name is Leva Hugo. Yeah. So the way, like like how even on WordPress and other mm-hmm. uh, places it works. Like you mm-hmm. normally have a themes folder and that has subfolders with the different themes that exist. Yeah. So. Oh, we want to move this within a folder yeah, called exactly. Diva. Let's just call it yep. Diva here. So oh. I just created a oh, Diva yeah, yeah. Hugo folder here. Start. So you just have to drag everything into the Diva yeah. Hugo folder. And... Okay, so that works. And we Perfect. see we are now version controlled because it was a git pull. So that's cool. Exactly. <laughs> so now if you look at it, everything you see inside mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. your themes file mm-hmm. is also something you see in a way outside the themes file yes I you have that. in your you have archetypes content data layout static yeah inside the theme file you're gonna have archetypes assets content can't come there because content can't be a mm-hmm. theme resource yeah that makes content sense. is your yeah. project resource yeah static can be both so the fun fact here is mm-hmm. if you have a file that has the same uh, name inside static as well as outside mm-hmm. static yeah so, for example, if in my static folder of my theme, which mm-hmm. is a uh, theme slash Leva Hugo slash static, yeah, I say this is my logo dot png. Sure. Uh, I'm gonna drag some picture in there just so as we're talking, so we have something. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. I'm gonna drag so, something in here. So, okay, you have this thumbnail for this stream. <laughs> yeah, you have a thumbnail for the stream. Perfect. Yeah. So the best part about Hugo is it will actually generate whatever's inside the theme static folder as mm-hmm. well as the one in your project static folder. Okay. Into a single static folder, but you don't necessarily have to nice. do that in your code base. And what's the order of overloading? As in? Uh, I'm using C++ terminology. Like basically it's going to look at both static folders and decide. So let's say I have a thing called Shanak Labs thumbnail JPG here. And let's say for some yeah. reason, I also had it inside my theme static folder. Which one would be? Static? That's exactly what yeah. I thought about while I was telling yeah. this. And I I haven't tried it, but I mean, you can try it right now as yeah. well. Once Let's we set that. this up, but I am pretty sure it's going to pick up the static folder of the project. I think that, that makes be sense. even higher. Sense. That makes sense. Actually, yeah, let's make sure to do this as an experiment. I'm going to leave this as a.jpg exactly. and we can like leave another a.jpg, which is like a black file or something and see which one it picks up but exactly exactly uh, without side tracking so we are now in this project i have a theme right yeah uh what do so i have if to look do? at a theme folder mm-hmm. now there's something so uh the best practice of theme development in hugo when you're mm-hmm. showcasing for the community mm-hmm. is to not just share your mm-hmm. theme files but also share the the files that go into the project as well. Makes sense. Because yeah. like we just discussed, you have theme yeah. that's separate and the project yeah. file separate. Yeah. So every Hugo theme you get from the community will have an example site folder. Ah, there we go. I see that. And you see everything, nothing here gets generated by the project. Like mm-hmm. Hugo will not get into this theme folder and just mm. figure it out. I see. You have to take the content from inside. Yeah. Uh, to take the folders from inside the example yeah. site yeah. Uh, folder. and replace it in your root directory. That makes sense. Root directory. So this is what I would use if I wanted blog post style seven. Actually, we can go look at that in here. I'm going to go, they probably have a live link to some place. Yes. Uh, live preview. Uh, so wh- the thing that we are seeing here, right? Post one is probably this one. I'm not sure. So uh, what's the uh, hyperlink up top? I think that was post-1.md. Yeah, so then unless they have set it differently in the config yeah. file, this is going to be the same thing in the post route as well. Dash one Let me just see. I don't think it goes there. Uh, I'm just looking at the site. They might have a place where they have like, oh, these are the types of posts we support or whatever. Um... But essentially, oh, there we go. So this is a type of post one, right? Yeah. And that's exactly what we're seeing if we go into the VS code. So um, here you have heading one, heading two, and some emphasis things. And when you go over yep. here, you have the same heading one, heading two, and emphasis. So basically, this exactly. is the example site. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. So this is the part where we, like, before we even get into the 
uh, thing of setting up the mm-hmm. theme, we could also just specify here itself mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. you can see you have markdown in itself below the yeah. one that I'm selecting on that screen. Yeah. This is all markdown. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But for adding functionality and for telling Hugo how to build mm-hmm. that page, you can either add YAML or TOML oh, syntax okay. up top. I see. So that's and like you the... don't need to be exactly. So you don't need like you would definitely have to have mm-hmm. this specified because mm-hmm. if you don't, then your page not function as you want it to. Makes sense. And there's like r- various things that I see that make sense. Every page needs a title and a publishing date. Exactly. And whether people can see image. it or not. Yeah. Uh, featured image. This is interesting because this is not how WordPress works. WordPress just picks up the first image by default. Uh, metadata and categories and tags, all of which make like English language sense. And yeah. Uh, and actually, the interesting part is if I go back to the browser. Uh, so this is the tag that we were looking at. Sorry, this is the category we were looking at: Android and gaming in the code. Yeah. I'm assuming they're not displaying the tags here. And they're probably visible from some other view. So yeah, just that's fair. We can yeah. we can code that in. That's not yeah. an issue. Yeah. Uh, so let's do one thing. Let's like at least get yeah. the very basic thing started. So so exactly. So look at so the first thing you need to do when you download a theme mm-hmm. is to compare the config files. Okay. So, so this your is, theme mm-hmm. has a config file of its own. Yeah. This is the themes config file that I'm putting on the right yeah. there. I'm going to close all of this yeah. for now keep leaving the shared notes and this would be my sites config.toml that I'm going to go put up here. Yeah. Um, sorry, I'm moving uh, Windows. The one inside the example site. Yeah. Yeah. So you can already see how mm-hmm. much functionality this theme developer has added in. Yeah. So uh, you're talking like, about these what? plugins. Right? Yeah. It? Okay. So, so essentially every developer will develop their site in different mm-hmm. ways. Mm-hmm. This developer has chosen to do it in this particular way. Yeah. So they have chosen. So everything you see above output mm-hmm. is something that Hugo would need you to define if okay. you are using that functionality. Makes sense. So for example, if you are using the page, if mm-hmm. you are using Hugo to paginate through mm-hmm. your content, yeah. it's not a default function, it's something you have to ask Hugo to do. Makes sense. Then you have to also specify except for a default value, which I think mm-hmm. is 10, mm-hmm. how many posts should be paginated through. Makes sense. So, so basically we have now on this theme, you're saying that after every six posts, paginate to a new page. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. So and this post has also added summary length. Yeah. So for example, Hugo has a keyword called summary mm-hmm. and we can get into that, but mm-hmm. basically what you like, what you can see here is the outputs. Mm-hmm tag here that you can the outputs keyword here mm-hmm. doesn't look the same as the ones above yeah because these are needed by your theme or by your website to set up mm-hmm. and these are based on functionalities that you feel are important for this I project see. so here we are basically saying hey make sure you output an html which is hugo's main job uh make a feed and make a json so if somebody is pulling it via api we can send exactly. It. okay exactly no, this is actually a cool functionality, right? Because you have a built-in API, you have a built-in RSS feed uh, that search engines can index. I think that's a, a often overlooked functionality. And if you scroll down even further, mm-hmm. if you come to line 43, mm-hmm. you would actually see that navigation is mm-hmm. part of this as well. I see. Now, if you understand HTML code, mm-hmm. you could, and if your client also understands yeah. HTML yeah. code, you can just hard code it in. Yep. But if you would want to have Hugo handle that mm-hmm. instead, mm-hmm. then you then this is the syntax that Hugo follows. That of course, sense. all this is in the documentation. Yeah. But no, it makes sense. It's so, and the theme has exactly. chosen to implement this as well. So like that's exactly. another big part of it. Yeah. Exactly. So what I wanted to scroll down into is line number seventy nine. Okay. So I think we are getting closer. There we go. Yeah. Default parameters. Yeah. Now this is essentially everything that a theme developer has set as his or their default. Yeah. 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 So for example, what is the meta description of yeah. the website? Yeah. What is the logo of the website? Yeah. What is the Google analytics ID? Mm-hmm. What's your contact information, yeah. which may come, may come in the contact space, yeah. the email that comes in the contact yeah. space, your address, your whatever copyright. Sure. 
where you can see he's actually used markdown code here yeah yeah and so, exactly so yeah. hugo doesn't expect hugo doesn't expect you to have any of this out of the box hugo doesn't mm -hmm. uh, come with google analytics setup yeah. out of the box yeah. you yeah. have to be yeah so, so this developer has decided to just give you that mm -hmm. And a lot of these things that I see here are linked to, uh, for example, I'm assuming it's this is where it's using the phone number that we gave it, and this is where we're exactly. using, the, yeah. So that's cool. Like, and a lot, and this is the the markdown footer that we saw. So exactly, a lot of this is basically also theme dependent, right? Like that's why you use the config from the theme. That makes sense. So Absolutely. I think a good first step would be for us to just copy this into Hugo's. Config Absolutely. Problem. So let's take the whole thing. I guess I replace the base so, URL. Yeah. So you yeah. might want to in in mm -hmm. other projects, you mm -hmm. might want to actually cross reference each thing that you're copy pasting and yeah. replacing. Yeah. But because starting from scratch, we can just yeah. That makes sense. Copy like the entirely. There we want to make sure we don't like for example we don't even want a Veno box plugin that so we can get rid of it. But perhaps exactly. Yeah. exactly. For now, I, yeah. As you said, like for now, let's just go with the basic. Theme. So. So, the, yeah. so the the biggest thing I need to highlight here is Hugo requires a theme. Mm -hmm. So, for example, if you look at line five of the config file right yeah. now, it actually tells Hugo to yeah. look for a folder called Leva, Leva Hugo, Hugo. Yeah. which is the theme that we have yeah. chosen. Yeah. So we can actually like uh, now that this is done, mm -hmm. we yeah. can actually look at the content folder, like okay. essentially duplicating the content gallery. And static folder as well, like basically everything that's in the example content. That makes sense. So I'm gonna take this and go paste it here, and uh, delete this one, and rename it. Uh, rename the content. I'm probably gonna do the same for you said for the. Or you could just drag and drop it into all of these, right? Uh, parent directory. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. So we need all of these. We need to move and we need to replace. There we go. So we have information from the theme now within us. So I guess we can close that theme folder. We don't need to care about it, right? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And so um, now we have content up top. Yep. We have static. We have layouts. Layouts is inside the theme, not yes. an issue. Uh, data content. Mm -hmm. And also the archetypes. Has the does the theme specify an archetype? I think it just came with like default.md, which had nothing. So which is pretty much the okay, same. Okay, fine. Then let's use Hugo's default. Yeah. We can actually create our own archetype, and that's also better. That better. yeah, I think like definitely let's go for that next. But first let's serve the site exactly. as it is. Uh I'll just exactly. put in so, some interesting absolutely. things and sort of because we know the free domain we're about to use. Uh, yeah, yeah. we can go with that. So you don't need to set that up right now either. Mm -hmm. You can even set this up exactly before going yeah. into production. That makes sense. Because this is all going to be localhost 1313 at this point. That makes anyway. sense. So let's just go give it just some basic titles. And I am going to uh, just put like uh, the details that we know already into this and then Absolutely. see how that goes. So let me go and recall the domain that we registered some time ago. Uh, So the other thing is for uh, the people watching this is we you can and we are going to talk about how you can get yourself a free domain and like basically I think one of the big things about Hugo is like you don't have to spend any money getting this up and running right yeah uh, so maybe you can speak a little bit about like Netlify like, very quickly while I search for the domains perfect yeah so because of the nature of static sites mm -hmm. and how it's incredibly easy and cheap to host you have many free uh, hosting providers mm -hmm. netlify is one of them versal is the other mm -hmm. you have maybe up to 10 free hosting providers for any form of static site you could also and just uh, chuck this on github for example right exactly exactly you can even put it on github on, onto github pages yeah but that is that has in my experience been a little tricky to yeah. set up yeah that makes sense so uh, I I wouldn't want to go in there directly. Yep. But otherwise, there are many many free hosting providers that help you do this. Yeah. And also, like and if you're on a legacy AWS thing, there's AWS Amplify, which we actually found exactly. very recently. So yeah, essentially, 
what we are doing is we are using Hugo to make a bunch of static HTML pages that can go anywhere. That could go directly on your S3 bucket if you care. And so, exactly. Okay, so I looked it up. Um, the project was past the paper, and we secured this domain name for ourselves, past the paper dot ml. So I put that in. Lovely. Uh, I think everything else is fine. I'm assuming this discuss short name is if we enable discuss commenting. That's the Absolutely. author's name. Yeah. So we went and put that in. Uh, I don't think we have to modify anything else here for the very basics, except maybe let's put this uh, a global uh, food blog. That sounds like a good description for now. Okay. Absolutely. This is important, right? Like this home points to what the home page is. Yeah. So I'm not necessarily sure why he has or why they have set this up. Yeah. Maybe once we go because yeah. so anything you see in ter in terms of a params yeah. or square yeah. bracket is something that I have as an uh, the, the theme developer has mm -hmm. decided to put in. That makes sense. So these are all custom uh, variables or custom names that they have defined here. So I'm just gonna put some dummy stuff here. Uh, do not like. Um, give away any personal details uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. but this is fine we can go change this copyright copyright 2020 uh, no rights reserved is much better <laughs> um, and there we go we have some like I, I don't think we need to tinker much more with this so let's get started Absolutely. so Sir. would it just be Hugo sir he, it'll be your he, in your it's in anyone else's case it'll be Hugo mm -hmm. space server yeah in your case it'll be Hugo dot yes for everyone it's server. Hugo server for me it's Hugo dot exe that server or if you yeah. choose not to install it well it's this one um, no there's a there's a high there's a dash next to the Hugo oh no sorry there's no a, I need to point it to no, the no dash directory so the name of the directory is the pepper project there we go. So we are unable to look at a config file. I think you have to be within that. So I'm going to... You have to be within that, yeah. exactly. So I'm going to just do this. So for most people, it will be just Hugo and whatever. And for me, it's like go two levels up, run Hugo exe and... Space server. server. And there we go. We have That's something it. running. You're already up. So now just click yeah. on the localhost 1313 link. I'm just going to follow that there and follow this there. So we are running and uh, we obviously don't have any content, which is great. <laughs> um, so actually this should have come. Uh, did you save your config normal? No, I don't think I did. That's such a good point. Uh, also, you should probably have auto save enabled. I just don't because uh, it was messing with something earlier. Yeah, uh, the, so, it's, so it's, now it's up. Yeah, so now we have, well, the exact same site, <laughs> except instead of being on their demo thing, it's locally running. And it's actually fascinating just how much of, I really appreciate this because when you buy a WordPress theme and you get like a basic thing, it does not look like this. It looks sad. It doesn't. But because yeah. of this example directory, Hugo has already helped us like get a pretty good view of this site to modify. And all our modifications exactly. are in. We, the mail to everything is in. So this is great. Like we have a thing running. Now, I think the main question is, so we found a free theme. Let's mark that as done. We got it running locally. That's done. Let's talk about taxonomies because I think that's a interesting exactly. and important thing to plan up front. So how would you define taxonomies for people who haven't so been I think, like... I think the best definition I know is like, think of species, right? Like you are a homo sapien. So... Homo is the genus, sapien is the subgenus, etc. Or one of them. I'm not very sure. It's been many years since I've done biology. I failed biology when I was in eighth grade. Then biology failed me in life, which is great. <laughs> uh, but yeah, essentially, it's a. It's I look at it like a tree. So mm. you have a category and a subcategory, etc. So for example, for a food blog, uh, and let's actually put bring up a live food blog as we talk about it. Food bluff. Uh, also, I love how the ads are just you not different. You have to change your uh, view, by the way. Okay, so we go to the browser. I was 
criticizing Bing ads. Like, this is not differentiating. I'm sorry. I don't know that's an ad. It's annoying. Okay. You're using Bing. Uh, I'm, uh, for this stream, I'm using Edge and it defaults <laughs> to Bing, which is uh, not bad. I actually like Bing for some things. Like, you can ask it intelligent queries. I don't want to log into Feedspot. I just want a food blog. Come on. Okay, I'm just going to go here. The recipe critic, right? And you can see very similar theme to what we were discussing here, etc., etc. Now, uh, let's actually go here. So for me, the taxonomy would, uh, they're using a tagging system here. So that's more like a flat taxonomy. But in my mind, the taxonomy would be something like, uh, in this case, Italian. And under Italian, yeah. maybe you have a region. Cuisines. So cuisine or something. And then you have a yeah. separate taxonomy to which this page also belongs, like quick meals. And 15 minutes yeah. is a subcategory, etc. So uh, I guess I would just look at it as a subtree type of thing. So uh, yeah. because we're talking about a blog that's like culturally mixed, to my mind, it comes like maybe you're talking of a traditional recipe or a fusion recipe. Um, and maybe you want to divide it by cuisine. C-U-I-S-I, any. Something. That's cool. You can rename yeah. it at any point. Yeah. That's the best part. So is this what you would expect? Like, I, I guess traditional and fusion would go under etymology. Under, exactly. And then you have traditional. Wow. And... <laughs> I, I didn't know that's a word. I think that means like the source of the word uh, or the origin, mm -hmm. but also it applies to mm -hmm. food. Like chicken vindaloo <laughs> is Portuguese, but is most popular in India. So. <laughs> um, wow. Uh, and cuisine, like some, they go with Indian, Italian, and maybe you would have a hybrid. Whatever. Yeah. Okay. So exactly. do these taxonomies sound correct? And how do we translate this to the blog? Perfect. So the the beauty of Hugo is actually the fact that when it comes to taxonomies, mm -hmm. you just have to define the parent category of the taxonomy. And okay. you don't have, like, it can have unlimited children. Mm hmm and you don't have to predefine them. Okay. Oh, I see. So, so, so for example, good. right now, yeah. So you have like, because we are mapping this out, we have recognized that etymology and cuisine mm -hmm. are two main taxonomies we have to create. Yeah. So let's go back to our config.toml. Yeah, let's do that. I'll push you back to code and we go to, uh, I'm going to minimize all of this. So we are just looking at config.toml and there we go. Perfect. So. Let's just see if this theme comes with its own. Uh, so Hugo by default gives you tags and category as a taxonomy. Okay. By default, that's out of the box. Okay. But now we are trying to create our own. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So let's see if this theme has already defined a taxonomy for us or not. So okay. I'm just going to do a quick search. Yeah. No, the theme has not defined taxonomies okay. for us. So you can just follow my cursor to maybe line number 12. Yeah. Yeah, I was thinking something that right up there. Let's put in yeah. uh, user contrib. So this is us. Us mucking exactly. around with the site rather than exactly. the designer. <laughs> okay. So to define a taxonomy in mm -hmm. Hugo, it's going to take you three hours mm -hmm. by writing just this much. Oh, nice. <laughs> and then it comes to exactly how you want it to mm -hmm. be spelled and laid out. Okay. So for example, Okay. So that's it. Now I'm I'm again saying that category and categories, tag and tags. Yeah. So the way it works is you would normally want a singular form of uh, the word mm -hmm. that is not not the plural but singular mm -hmm. to be the route to be the slug of Makes sense. taxonomy. Makes sense. And you would want the plural one to be the name. So this is exactly but, what shows up in the URL. Exactly. Okay. And it's, it's what you specify in I your uh, uh, markdown as okay. well. Okay. But very honestly, mm -hmm. I would recommend to not break your head over it. You could literally make it plural Same. on both sides. And okay. That makes sense. Perfectly. This is all like for your organization more than anything. Exactly. So actually, like while we're discussing this, I think let's also discuss types because I feel that's very related. Like once we discuss taxonomies and types, we can go and actually create our first post. Exactly. You yeah. mean archetypes? Yes. So that's the first okay. thing. Okay. Before 
like we sort of discuss archetypes i want to say if you're coming from like drupal or wordpress ca- taxonomies is what you think of as categories and i think types is what you think of as like post types of views right okay so in my mind archetype would be uh like a recipe is would is would is a kind of thing a food blog would have uh maybe Absolutely. you'd have a news update that looks very different doesn't have images is very succinct something like that so would you say these are two good types to start out with like a recipe and an article like Absolutely. talking of travel Absolutely Absolutely. So essentially, in your uh, so before we even def- like mm-hmm. get into that, we could actually maybe specify where it comes from. Yeah, yeah, that that so would be good. Example, so for example, let's assume we're we're going with the flow. This is the blog we love. Yeah. So, uh, if you could just go back to the VS Code view. Yeah. And you can look at the blog folder under content. Okay, content and blog. There we go. Yeah. So we so have examples. So you have. 13 posts over yeah, here. Yeah. Now let's assume we want to make a 14th. Okay. The way people would normally go mm-hmm. about it is mm-hmm. they would right click, they would create a new one, they would mm-hmm. call it post 14.mp yeah, and just yeah. creating that. Yeah, sure. I just created that in your Mhm. There we go. And then they'll go to post 13.md and they will just copy paste everything into this sure, new. Sure. Sure. Now, for how long will you keep doing this? Yeah, that's like and you are manually tracking it, and that's a exactly. Pain. And this also means that you have to remember the date format exactly yeah. how it's supposed to be yeah, put yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And no one has that also kind of time zones and other nonsense that you have to recall. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So, archetypes essentially, especially a uh, 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 one thing before that. Mm-hmm. So, what you can do is you can literally try doing something called. Uh, Hugo new mm-hmm. in your sh- in your shell. Yeah, let me so I'm just going to paste that. the command here. Yeah, let me just terminate this. So uh, we go there, and it's our server. We do Hugo new. So I'm just uh, pasting the f- the format into the shared notes file. Okay, uh, let's put that up there. Or let's actually put so, the split window so we see things. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. So if you run the command Hugo new, mm-hmm. and then you say the co- the 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 folder under your content folder right. where this comes from. So in this under. case, blog. So, exactly. Okay. Slash and what should be the file name? Okay. So we are saying post fifteen dot md at this point. Yeah. Now. Yeah. And then you go do that, and it, it says it's created. It does this. It puts in. It doesn't have as much, I would say, metadata exactly. as the other one, but it has. the title the date and whether it's in draft exactly yeah but now this didn't take us any effort no this already takes the f- it it creates a title for the post based on yeah. the slug that we defined yeah. which is post dash 15.md yeah. yeah. and it just decides to, it's like oh yeah i know what a title could be from here mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. now if you could, like this kind of functionality is called an archetype where you yeah. it's essentially templatizing your mm-hmm. markdown file mm-hmm. to then refer at a later date and you can of course so you do don't... clever things like the default image is if somebody doesn't specify exactly. image the default image is like a plate of food or whatever exactly yeah. and you can go a step further also in some projects you might want to uh, specify maybe a trailing slash mm-hmm. in your images mm-hmm. in some projects in some post types yeah. you may have to specify a, like not specify a trailing slash mm-hmm. so you could actually put that into your archetype directly so now if you just go to your parent folder you can see archetypes yeah. default.md yes that i have opened yeah so this is what now, it picked up from exactly yeah. so hugo what mm-hmm. it does by default is it tries to look for an archetype that is based on your current post mm-hmm. if it doesn't exist it will take default Makes and sense. you can see default is essentially the date yeah. in which you made this post yeah and you can see the title is replaced dot file name with whatever yeah. yeah now we want to create a new blog Yes. So let's create a new. So you have to create a new archetype mm-hmm. with the name of that folder. So, so blog it's called blog. D. Exactly. And so I, I'll I'll take lead on that. Okay. I can okay. just put I'll it, just put it in there. This then. Um, exactly. Yeah. There we go. So now in blog or md, I'm mm-hmm. pasting a default mm-hmm. thing again. Mm-hmm. But now let's see what we need from our other. Sure. So I'll open this in the side view because we have the notes anyway. Okay. So 
we definitely need everything that comes post for uh, post the dif- the draft is mm-hmm. uh, draft falls mm-hmm. from post thumb all the way down to type is a post yeah and this is so, how magically hugo knows this is a category post right like it's a type no actually this is this is not required okay so this is something i'm guessing is because of the theme, theme in itself type, like yeah. the exactly yeah so you can actually just copy paste like i'm just copy pasting this into the oh sorry here is the MP. taxonomies just categories and tags yeah okay exactly so now i'm just going to put some hygiene on this mm-hmm. Now this is going to be a blank canvas. Yeah, and actually, at any given point. what we can also do is like specify Set the default, default category to be like I absolute don't know, cuisine, C U I S I N E. I think it was, and absolute. a default tag to be like how WordPress has uncategorized. I guess we could just go with like recipe. So if you forget, Absolutely. it'll be tagged like this. Yeah, that's a good thing to point out because Hugo does not have an un- uncategorized category. Yeah, yeah, uncat. So now. Yeah. yeah. So if you do the same thing again, which is uh, Hugo new blog, and you make it sixteen at this point, mm-hmm. you will see a new post being created with with this everything. That... Now. Yes. And it understood now... that it's a type of blog because of the folder name, correct? Exactly. Okay. Cool. So if you if your folder name is post, mm-hmm. then your arc type should be called post. Makes sense. that that makes a lot of sense that actually means that you don't have to before time define anything you can just flexibly do this exactly okay so now we have post 16 i am just going to uh write some markdown just so that we have some information um uh, and of course i'm going to pull some free images uh and let me just copy a recipe uh open source recipes There we go. We have an open-faced turkey sandwich from Newport Health. I'm just going to copy it for now, and I'm <laughs> sure when this blog is actually a blog, we can write something. So, uh, so the interesting thing to do here later. So I'm just going to say, P U R K E Y avocado open-faced sandwich, and I'm going to put this in. I think. Uh, The interesting thing would Maybe be in the title. Yeah, let me go put the same thing as the title. Where is the title? Uh, yeah, post sixteen, and he, the description will be a uh, healthy sand. W H I C H. Um, I think the other interesting thing is, and we can discuss this for later streams, of course. Is you see, almost every recipe has this little side box with ingredients. Yeah. So I think we should define a type where we're able to, or rather, define a custom page where we're able to put this. So a recipe will have this layout, which has quantities and calories and other stuff, Absolutely. and articles would be different. But for now, let's just run with, uh, of course, the default that we have. Uh, Absolutely. So, but I could give you like a mm-hmm. one sentence TLDR yeah. of how that works. Yeah. Is because this because if you see this entire syntax I'm mentioning mm-hmm. on top is YAML, mm-hmm. you just have to nest your YAML code. That's it. Oh that's nice. So it's yeah. Yeah. So you would just have a special type. Yeah, that would be interesting. I definitely think we should explore exactly. that. Exactly. I'm going to pull a free image as well just so that we have something interesting Absolutely. to look at. So I've gone into Unsplash, I search for avocado. This looks really nice. So I'm going to pull this. Uh I'm just going to say copy image link and I'll make sure to credit this human being. Um Oh, Ryan Quintle. So we make sure we are going to credit this person, but let's go put this. So can I put this image as like a hero image somewhere? Here? Yeah, I can here, right? Up top, exactly. Okay. So, so again, this is not something Hugo expects you to do. Yeah. So Hugo essentially it provides you a blank canvas, mm-hmm. and it's up to you, the developer, once you make a few projects and once you see how everyone else do it, mm-hmm. to figure how this is done. That makes sense. I mean, so, uh, like. at the very minimum you could just leave it as default and continue exactly so, so if you see everything except for uh, every, like draft and above the first mm-hmm. three lines mm-hmm. are all essentially your uh, default parameters that it's best kept that you yeah. set 
again if you do not set a date hugo defaults to its own date which is a very bad thing it does that makes sense but it it needs a date so it's just going to yeah. resort to any data it knows then draft is important because if you don't set draft then it's going to assume everything is already published yeah. and so, of course uh, everything you see under that is yeah. custom okay so image is custom description is custom categories is something we just define our own taxonomy i'm going to go get rid of this draft because we will build the site like in a second absolutely and we want it to show up which is interesting a control right like you can have people write this and then publish it at some date later exactly uh, a change of screen by the way okay back to vs code so what i did is i picked up that avocado thing and i just moved it here so uh, the theme author has kindly like made these feature post gallery posts folder and nice. i think post is a really nice place to organize it so i go move it there and i remember it was like 16 and of course all of this is just your mental models of how you want to organize it right exactly exactly are, are the names flat like it doesn't matter what structure it is and i just have to go say post or do i have to put the full path here from your static folder yeah no you just have to put the the so you don't have to mention the word static anything that okay so comes after static folder to mention so anything is here that's fine so images posts and post 16 md so that when became the hero image and of course i can reuse it here just like in a markdown way right absolutely so i'm guessing it's post 16 jpeg it might be jpeg i think i saved it as a jpeg um yeah if i just made that change okay cool and um i also want to make sure image image good see oh i don't have anything in my clipboard great uh ryan quintel i'm just going to type r y n q u i n t a l and splash okay uh it's a really nice picture by the way Absolutely. So I'm going to go again to Hugo serve. So there's no question of building server. server. Um I saved the file and I hit that and let's go back into the browser. Does it have hot reloading? It does. Oh, that's cool. So I wouldn't even have to stop it. I could just add content and it would pick that up. Exactly. So now post I guess oh here it's showed it up already and we can click into it and see that it's has the hero image, has the type um we have not enabled discuss yet so i think that's like all advanced topics i really like this theme because discuss integration is i think a big deal for a blog like a lot of Absolutely. blogs move to static websites but forget commenting is an important uh, aspect yeah. of communication so that's great you have a newsletter thing um, you obviously could probably have rss that i'm not transmitting here but uh, we could set all that up so okay we have some basic things where we clearly got started with our first blog and we didn't have to make any pre decisions on the taxonomies or anything it's all like on the fly exactly. and i think a good starting point for the next lab would be like making a custom archetype for recipes and updates so we explored this in the terms of how to modify the current one but uh it, yeah i think like a good place for a slightly so more advanced so what you could do right now yeah. what you could do right now yeah. is uh essentially in your taxonomy mm-hmm. section you could just l- mention it there that makes sense so uh i go here this is the one right yeah it's a uh, screen yeah so i i have have it tagged as recipes sorry this is the one right um i have it yeah. tagged as recipes is that No so essentially what what we need what we can mm-hmm. do is uh, let me just go back to the config.toml we mm-hmm. essentially set cuisines so now um okay. you had to I fill in that. a gap here yeah. what cuisine does avocado fall into i see so i'm going to say california <laughs> <laughs> so that's where it picked it up from so it picked it up the taxonomy is cuisine this is the slug so it's going to be available at slash cuisines and exactly under cuisines we can just go put in like whatever california and it would absolutely california yeah and i'm going to save it and oh there we go it like instantly hot reloaded i couldn't even switch to the browser before it did that and... exactly so now i hope i if 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 i'm guessing rightly yeah 
if you just go slash cuisines on the mm-hmm. the URL. Yeah. I think it went to cuisine instead of cuisines. That so, just uh, might be how we have saved the file. Uh, 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 remove categories from this. It's, it's la- just root oh. slash cuisines. Mm, I might have made it. Maybe it's quiz- No, it's a spelling error. Hang on. <laughs> there we go. So there, there we have go. California. That's on your page already. Oh, that's so cool. So you can have a list of... and. Uh, let's actually do this maybe as the last thing before we pause the stream and continue from here. Could we assign a picture to the taxonomy itself? Like, can this have a hero image? Absolutely. I'm saving. I'm adding one more taxonomy. See there. The second yeah. will just appear. Perfect. So we have like Mexico and we have California and it's great. Uh, so yeah, like if we were to add a hero image here, where would we go? Would we, I'm going to switch back to VS code. Uh, so that's when we have to get into the deep dive of mm-hmm. how Hugo projects are laid out. Mm-hmm. So there is there like Hugo does have its own terminologies, its mm-hmm. own uh, nomenclature in terms mm-hmm. of how these things are structured. So yeah. so if you uh, like you'll have to go and, like I think we can keep it for a uh, later. Yeah, lecture. that makes that makes sense. But that would be yeah. that's another functionality. So when we talk about archetypes and taxonomies, let me just say to do. Uh, by the way, this is like off topic, but low key, my favorite uh, VS extension is the to do plugin. So okay. I don't know if you've seen it. Um, essentially, what uh, I, I use this one called to do highlight, but there's many others. So anytime you uh, write to do in capital letters, it will like mm-hmm. highlight that and add it to a separate tab in the site. So actually, let me just install this. Oh, wow. Two seconds. Uh, it's a super light extension, right? So you're doing something yes. and you want to do to do, uh, get to this later. And, uh, yeah, if you look at, I forget which one of these are, uh, I think you have to definitely go and enable it, but in your file tree, you can have like a little thing in your outline that says, uh, yeah, I, I have to take a look at it because usually it's on my work computer setup. So yeah. uh, essentially this will be listed. It's exactly like adding a bookmark so you can go through it and uh, do it. So it's a pretty cool extension. But yeah, in that spirit, let's go add a to-do here. Uh, the first one is like set up hero images for each taxonomy. Are you slash... writing this in the notebook? Yes, this is, uh, I'll put it to notepad. Sorry, there we go. Set up some hero images for each taxonomy plus some like description. So if you click on the taxonomy page, like right now, uh, we just went to, what was that, cuisines? Uh, yeah. Browser, cuisine, yes. So I think the next one, we could actually put understanding list and single pages in Hugo. Yeah. Because once we do that, then understanding terms and uh, exactly how yeah, I didn't know they're called list pages, but that's basically what I was going yeah. after. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, single pages in Hugo with the goal of then setting up like a custom exactly. list page. Yeah, exactly. And then we can also maybe look into the theme files and add our mm-hmm. uh, cuisine into the design and the tags yeah. that we thought was missing into the design. Yeah. So, uh, modify the theme to understand. Understand taxonomy. Okay, I think this is a good like Absolutely. next step. The other things to discuss, we've already sort of briefly discussed this. So I'm just, and since it's just a browser, this is where you can get a lot of your free domain stuff. So I use freenorm.com. Uh, it's pretty good. Like if you want to register it for multiple years, you have to pay them. But if it's a short term thing, you just want to like try it out. There's absolutely nothing. So that's where we went and registered it. So maybe the next uh, time we come around to it, we could push this project as we were doing it to GitHub. I'll keep some pages ready. So, you know, we have some dummy recipes and stuff and see how that step is. Absolutely. So we made good, like I would say excellent progress. I think I'm going to call archetypes done. Because without understanding list and single pages, we're not going to be able to do cool stuff with it anymore. Exactly. Um, yeah. So then free domain plus hosting 
is sort of the very big next to do item, which I'm gonna move to the to do stack. Also, like you have these communities talking about how the best productivity thing is like Notion or OneNote, or there's a re like a new one. Um, I keep forgetting it. I only use Notepad and just like find stuff. <laughs> it's much easier. Um, so yeah, we have set it up. It works locally. It was very quick. Um, we want to do Nettlefly and Forestry the next time. So let's go move that there. Um, yeah, I think at this point we went through quite a bit actually. We set up a very basic of Hugo. We, I'm gonna go look at it. Like we understood what, how to modify the theme, how to use the theme. We know how to muck around and like add pictures and where pictures go. So that's already a lot. And honestly, if you told somebody that you built this website in like, I want to say an hour, <laughs> uh that's hard to believe for most people and for no money at all i think that's the biggest thing right exactly uh yeah so i think maybe the next weekend we set this up and finish it so we deploy it we put in some actual dummy recipes in it or like actual recipes yeah. in it we put in some photography that's not just stolen from unsplash thank you again ryan <laughs> who really has some really <laughs> nice pictures um but yeah i mean let's um let's do that the next time and i'm going to end the stream now Bye.